What a day it has been for Toronto Blue Jays, fans, management, team, everything. The Blue Jays after coming back from seven runs to walk it off in the 12th inning against the Tampa Bay Rays yesterday. Blow a seven-run lead to lose today. Losing 10-9, same score, but reversed in nine innings. So the Jays lose the series two games to one. They're now 40-67 and 67 on the year. However, in losses, you got to try and find ways to take out positives. And you know what? Aaron Sanchez, his line does not suggest he had a great ball game. He went five and two-thirds, gave up six hits, four runs, all four were earned, and he struck out ten! Marky, or Marcus Stroman, I'm so... Uh, uh, Aaron Sanchez, you know, in the first two innings, nobody hit him at all. Two innings, six strikeouts. It was awesome. Didn't walk a batter in the ballgame. Hmm. Keep an eye on that. But the, the, the cra- crappy thing about it is, he went into that sixth inning, up 8-1. He only gave up eight, one run over five innings. We're like, man, he's had a great start again. And then he gives up a couple hits, then a two-run double. And we're like, ah, it sucks. Then they bring in Justin Schaefer, and he gives up a hit. Another run comes in. Oh, my God. And so Sanchez, as much as the line does not, and his ERA did jump one point to 6.07. He was good. Back-to-back starts for Aaron Sanchez, and he's been pretty good. Now, ideally, it really doesn't matter. Results are really what matters. And, you know, numbers suggest even four runs didn't look good. So, there are positives, though. Ten strikeouts and did not walk a batter. Those are two things you want to look at and say, man, that is not Aaron Sanchez, but we like it. All right? And the Blue Jays offensively got it done once again. And you know what? This is where you're starting to see. The Blue Jays really starting to take full offensively. Look, the, the Tempe Rays have one of the best pitching staffs in the game. Coming into the series, they had the best ERA among any team. Now, I'm not talking bullpen. I'm not talking starting pitching. I'm talking about both combined. The best ERA. And the past two games, the Jays have scored 10 runs and 9 runs. Some would be proud of. And like we always talk about, they're being competitive. And I'm loving what we're seeing from the Blue Jays. You know, bottom of the second inning, Justin Smoke at the dish, and he gets a fastball right down the middle. He hits it to the opposite field gap, and it leaves the yard, and the Jays are up 1-0. And we're like, all right, that's what you like to see. A couple batters later, you know, Tasker Hernandez rips the ball to center field, and that's a double. Billy McKinney comes in to score, and the Jays are up 2-0 early. Things are looking great. You know, and then you go to the bottom of the third inning, and then the Jays get a little rally started. Kevin Biggio singles the lead off the inning, then Freddie Galvis knocks him over to third base, two on, runners in the corners, nobody out, and then I think Gurriel strikes out, but then Kevin Biggio scores on a wild pitch. Great job there, comes home and scores. It's a 3 nothing Jays advantage. Then Vladimir Guerrero Jr. then singles to center field. Freddie Galvis comes in to score. A two-out single may I add from, from uh, Vladdy, and the Jays have a 4 nothing lead. Things are great. And then Matt Demi gets an RBI single in the left field, makes it 4-1. Oh, well. And you go to the bottom of the fifth thing, and what a job by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in this at bat, guys. I mean, honestly, first and second, nobody out. Vladdy at the dish. I think it's nobody out. Or maybe there's, was there one out? Hold on. Where, what inning was that? The uh, bottom of the fifth. All right. Bottom of the fifth inning. Um, yeah. So, yes, there was nobody out. Two on and nobody out. Then... Uh, who was on the mound? Chirinos. He boxed. And it was a clear balk. Both guys move up. Second and third. Nobody out. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr. gets beaten on a pitch. But he's that good. And his bat speed is that good. That he's able to still get to it. And hit a pretty hard hit ball to right field. Both runs come in to score. That one run they just scored. Yeah, we'll add two to that. And the Jays continue to pile on. It's now 6-1. And then Billy McKinney comes up a few batters after that, and he crushed a two-run shot. The Jays got an 8-1 lead. What the heck's going on? And we talked about it. The little things from Aaron Sanchez that started to fall apart a little bit. You know, G-Man Choi and, and, Ham, and Fam, Ham, Fam get on base. And former Blue Jay farmhand Travis Darno and former Met Travis Darno and Met fans are continue to pull their hair out. If they don't like the Marcus Stroman trade, they're freaking out. And I don't blame them. They're about to trade Noah, C- Noah Syndergaard. They've already traded Darn or waived or traded Darno, and he's revitalized his career in Tampa. And they don't like the trade with Stroman. They've acquired Stroman and traded two two of their own, really their best pitching prospects they have. So 
if I'm the if I'm the Mets right now, I'm I'm pulling my hair out. And Travis Darno gets a two run double, but it's okay. You're still up eight three, right? And then Nick Lowe gets an RBI single, and we're like, okay, what's going on here? And that RBI single, by the way, was off of Justin Schaefer making it an 8-4 game, but you're still up by four runs. We're okay. And then the bottom of the sixth thing with Lourdes Gurriel Jr. on base, Vladdy then doubles to left field. Great job by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. getting the RBI double. He had a three-hit ball game in this one, and they get that one of those runs right back. You're now up 9-4 in the in the bottom of the sixth. Your things are going well. G-Man choice a two-run shot in the, in the top of the seventh, and we're like, okay. All right, so it's, uh, what is it, a 9-6 game? We're still up by three, right? All right, things are okay. To, uh, top of the eighth inning with David Phelps on. Gives him a two-run shot to Guillermo Heredia. Hits a ball. It was right over the middle of the plate, and he crushes it deep and gone. It's okay. You're still winning by one now, right? We're still winning by one. <laughs> Next batter, Willie Adamas, he and, and David Phelps could not have hung a breaking ball anymore. And Willie Adamas just crushes into the seats and we're tied. And you go to the top of the ninth inning and, and Dave, Daniel Hudson on the mound and then he loads the bases. And then Charlie Montoyo decides, hmm, I'm going to bring in Derek Law. What? Coach! What are you doing? Now, ideally, he gets the ground ball, wasn't hit hard enough to get the double play, and it wasn't hit hard enough to get the guy out at home plate. So the run comes in to score, and you're down 10-9. Bottom nine, three up, three down, ball game. Well, Rays, Rays fans, we did it to you, you did it to us. Fine, now, good game, that's it. And okay, we're going to move on from that because we don't want to talk about that anymore. Uh, let's get to some positive. We already talked about Aaron Sanchez and Justin Schaefer. Like I said, give up two hits in in his uh, short time. He only went a third of an inning, got a strikeout, but that was about it for his his day. And uh, Joe Biagini, uh, after a really good scoreless inning streak, gave up four hits, walked the batter, and gave up two runs, the two-run shot to G-Man Choi. And David Phelps, like I said, hung two pitches. You don't do that. Oh, two, or sorry, um, two thirds of an inning. Give it three hits. All three were, or all three of his runs were earned, and he got a strikeout, and that sucked. It. Daniel Hudson, the earned run was against him. Give up a hit, walk two guys. Yeah, he struck out three, but and then Derek Law came in, went two thirds of an inning, didn't give up a hit, but got a strikeout, and that was the end of his day. But let's get to the positives because the offense was great. It was great once again. Now, initially, Eric Sogard was going to be in the lineup. Yeah, now they scratch him. You know what that means. And in the third inning, he says his goodbyes because Eric Sogard was traded. You know what I mean? And, and it happens. He got traded to the Tampa Bay Rays. Might as well just switch, switch jerseys, hop into the next dugout. I guess that's really what happened with Eric Sogard. Maybe he probably didn't. He probably didn't do that because he was already in Jay's uniform in the third. He wouldn't just hop over there for the fifth or whatever. <laughs> that would have been really, really weird. Um... And uh, Kevin Biggio went one for five in the ball game with a run scored. Freddie Gallus one for five with a run scored in the game as well. But uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. had a great one. He was two for five and two runs scored. Five hits in his last two games. His average back up to 290. Good to see Lourdes Gurriel Jr. getting back into the hit column. Justin Smoke one for three. He had the solo shot, scored two runs in the ball game, um, and and walked twice as Justin Smoke. So he continues to have a great season uh, of getting on base. Right, what's his on base percentage? Still 359, even though the batting average is only 218. Still getting on. On base. That's what you love to see. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr., this guy is getting hot. You're seeing it. He is getting real hot as Vlad. He went three for five in the ball game at four RBIs, scored a run in the game. He is hitting 259 on the season, people. The batting average is climbing for Vladdy. The RBI totals are climbing. He's up to 38 RBIs and 37 runs scored. He's hitting 259. And he walked once, did he? He walked once today? No, he did not. On base of still 335, which ain't bad at all. Great job for him. Brandon Jure after the great game yesterday. Eh, 0 for 4 with a couple strikeouts today. So not the greatest for him. Billy McKinney, 1 for 4 with a couple runs scored on the home run. Or sorry, a couple RBIs in the home run. And scored two runs as well. He also walked once in the game. And Tay Oscar Hernandez. I don't know what's going on with him lately, but he's been swinging the bat a lot better. He went 2 for 3 in the game today with an RBI. Walked twice. And Teoscar Hernandez is now hitting 219 on the year with a 287 on base. And with the two walks today, he has 25 walks on the season. Where's the strikeout numbers? Because they're always usually through the roof. Okay, 80, and still 86 uh, strikeouts in 76 games, and he struck out once today. So, still not the greatest in that standpoint, but you're slowly starting to see the progress of Teoscar Hernandez. He's not chasing as much for bad pitches. So I'm, I'm really liking what we're seeing from Teoscar. I think his strikeout was the last one of the game, or really close to it, and it was just an awful pitch, but... 
I'm, I'm liking what we're seeing from Teo. He, he's looking a lot better. And Reese McGuire gets his first call up to the Blue Jays this season. Well, he, he, I think he had like one at bat yesterday. Or did he play yesterday? I don't know. I don't know if he did. Actually, we're gonna have to look at that. No, he no he did. So he came in as a defensive replacement yesterday. He didn't get in that bat though. Went one for five in the ball game. Had a nice a uh, nice single in this one, but he struck out twice in the game. So that's it for Reese McGuire. We talked about the pitching, and that was the end of that. So let's go down to the minor leagues because. That's what really today is all about for Jays fans because that's really all we have left. Other than the great offensive players we have up here in the big leagues right now, that's it. We don't have any pitching. So that's why the management continues to acquire pitching. So let's get down to the minor leagues and see what happened. Bo Bichette, 0 for 2 in the ball game. Doesn't matter. He's up to the big leagues now, baby. He'll be in KC tomorrow. Can't wait. The youngins are back together. Bijo, Bichette, Guerrero. The youngins we've heard about for so, so long are finally here at the big league level all together, and I can't wait. Um, no matter if Bichette's been struggling lately, he's not the big league. He's got a clean slate. I can't wait. And he's facing a team in Kansas City who's not the greatest. So it's a team that you can kind of get on. You know, it's the stadium's not going to be too full there in Kansas City. It barely at all, probably. I think Kansas City has identical records to us, so that's the kind of situation we're in right now. And uh, who else did something? Rowdy Telez, he's been he's been pretty good down there in AAA. Really finding himself again. He was 2 for 4 in the game today with an RBI, a walk, and two runs scored. He's now hitting 298 at AAA uh, this year. So it's good to see Rowdy Telez uh, really finding himself as of late. All right? And on the mound, uh, Sean Reed Foley, went, uh, he only went one inning. And maybe he was acting as an opener. I don't know if that's a call. Or maybe because he's coming up here to pitch at some point. I don't know. He went a clean inning. He gave up no hits. Walked one, but struck out a batter. Good job for Sean Reed Foley. And uh, Ty Tice went two innings. He gave up two hits. Walked two but didn't, give a, didn't allow a run and struck out four, dropping his ERA to 1.74. Ty Tice is a guy to keep an eye on moving forward, guys. 23 years of age, all right? In there in Triple A, dominating out of the bullpen. So Ty Tice is a guy to really keep an eye on moving forward, guys, because I think if you see a guy like Daniel Hudson get moved and you see, excuse me, and you see a guy like, uh, you know, Ken Giles get moved, you might see a Ty Tice really quick. So, that's all I got to say about that. Down to the double-A New Hampshire Fisher Cats. My boy, Yenzi Diaz, has been struggling as of late. You know, he went four and two-thirds today. Gave up seven hits, six runs, five were earned. Walked four and struck out four ERA. Jumped, jumped to 4.15. So, tough time there for Yenzi Diaz. But looks to continue to grow as things... Now, looks like it's easier for him. I'm praying. All right. And offensively, Forrest Wall had a good ball game. He was two for three with two runs scored, a walk, two walks, excuse me, and an RBI raising his average to 274. Santiago Espinal, two for four with an R, with three RBIs and a run scored. He's hitting 274 as well. Good to see down there for those guys. Spanberger went one for five, and Kevin Smith continues to rake. He was two for five with an RBI and a run scored today. Struck out twice, but still a 214 average. That average is really coming up for Kevin Smith. Now I'm curious when the when the uh, when the calendar turns to August, what's he going to be like? That's my next question. I don't know what he's going to what we're going to see from him. Riley Adams went one for two with two runs scored and walked twice and at an RBI. He's in 250. So Riley Adams doing a good thing down there in the eighth spot for the New Hampshire Fisher Cats and down in Dunedin, where possibly Simeon. Uh, oh God, what's his name again? Um, I gotta remember. Uh, okay, yeah, Simeon Woods Richardson. Hey, I gotta get used to that. Uh, I'm. If 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 uh, if pipeline's right and he, it says that he's in advanced A, but he hasn't pitched there yet, if he is in advanced A, he'll be down in Dunedin ASAP, which I'm kind of I'd kind of be shocked about because he's 18, but and he hasn't been dominating A ball, so I don't really know what the plan is for that. But down there in Dunedin right now, boy oh boy, Cal Stevenson is is rick I don't know what I just said there, rip ripping it apart lately. I mean, he's tearing the ball off. It is, it is remarkable. He went four for six today. Had three RBIs, scored two runs. The guy's hitting 302 now. Again, remember, guys, this is why you draft and develop. Cal Stevenson was a guy the Jays drafted last season, and, you know, I think he was in the, what? The, uh, he was in the top 10 rounds, but I don't know exactly where he was. And right now he's a Dunedin at 22 or 23 years old, just straight up dominating. It's good to see for Cal Stevenson. My boy Alejandro Kirk had a great ball game. He was two for three with three RBIs, a run scored, and walked three times. Alejandro Kirk now hitting 310 on the year. Dem uh, sorry, yeah, where are we here? Uh, Samad Taylor with one for four with a walk, two runs scored, and uh, two RBIs hitting 223 on the year. My boy Maximo Castillo 
Went five and two thirds, gave up six hits, four runs, only two were earned. Walked one and struck out five guys. His ERA is now is only two ninety five. And remember, Maximo Castillo is only twenty twenty one years old down there in advanced A, pitching really well. So it's good to see down there for Blue Jays pitching because I think now that you've traded Marcus Stroman, we know how the pitching is in the minor leagues for the Blue Jays. Anytime one of the young pitchers, like a guy like Nate Pearson or Eric Perdino or Yenzi Diaz, Hector Perez, all these names that I've mentioned, once they do well, it's kind of like, a, oh, that's nice to see. All right, so down in Lansing, let's say, I mean, Sean Weimer, I mean, again, a guy that I don't really see going anywhere for this team. I thought he was pulling things together. No, nah, not really. Five, two and two-thirds, five hits, four runs. All four were earned in walk two. He wasn't the greatest at all today. But Griffin Cohenine, as much as it was only a one-for-three ball game with two RBIs and a run scored in a walk, it's great to see him get back in the hit column. Griffin Cohenine's been struggling a lot lately. He's only, he's still only hitting 275 on the year, but it was it's great to see him get a hit and get back into the hit column and, and start feeling good once again. It's great to see. Uh, Moreno was 0 for 4 in the ballgame, hitting 306, and Otto Lopez 0 for 5 with an RBI and a run scored, hitting 296 on the year. Again, that's the young regime down there in A ball that is doing really, really well. Now they lost 13 4, but Sean Weimer was awful. So that's this, that's just that. All right, quickly down to Vancouver. We talked yesterday about Alec Manoa getting his uh, Vancouver Canadiens debut. And on the mound for the Vancouver Canadiens today is Adam Klofenstein. All right, uh, what was he the, I think he was the second round pick last year by the Blue Jays. All right, I think he was the second round pick. Was he the third round pick? I think he was the second round pick of the uh, Blue Jays last year. And he did a great job when he was, I think he was in the Gulf Coast League last season. He did a good job in very limited time down there last season. And he had a shaky first couple starts in Vancouver this year. But since then, he has been dominating Vancouver. He went, in, like I said, an inning already today. And no hits, one walk, couple strikeouts. Erie's up to 2.56 as of right now. All right, he's only pitched one inning. He'll probably end up going like five or six. So we'll see where he's at after that. But it's great to see him dominate. Young pitcher doing well. Huh. It's nice to see. All right, in town in Bluefield, uh, the young one, Miguel Geraldo, the guy to keep an eye on. Real hard moving forward, people. He dominated the Gulf Coast League last year. He is there. Er, he's there in Bluefield this season at 18 years old. He went three for five today with two runs scored, an RBI, and a walk. He's hitting 305. Leonardo, Leonardo Jimenez. Went one for four with an RBI, only hitting 260 on the year. Really dropped a lot lately. But again, that guy's only 17. So just pump the brakes a little bit. Let the kid continue to grow. All right? I like what we're seeing down there from the minor leaguers today. A lot of positive things. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video, and you guys... um. Uh, enjoyed the offense by the Toronto Blue Jays there today. So that like button, do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on this game, your thoughts on the young ends, your thoughts on the minor leaguers we've talked about here today. Your thoughts about being jacked up for Boba Shet coming up to the Blue Jays. I'm pretty sure he'll play tomorrow. Again, not, not quite sure. I'm, I'm assuming he will since this is an afternoon game. Then after the trade got made, oh, he's coming up to the big leagues. Okay, great. Now, you know... He, that was about, what, 4 or 5 o'clock? Pro no, probably about 6 o'clock, I would say. Look, they play tomorrow night. So it would not surprise me if he's in the lineup tomorrow for the Blue Jays at Kansas City at Kauffman Stadium. It's going to be a lot of fun, all right? Down in Bluefield, yeah, there's really not much else to go on and talk about when it comes to down there. All right, so we'll get back to the big leagues here for the upcoming series against the Kansas City Royals. Thomas Pannone is getting the start tomorrow. Now, I'm going to give Thomas Pannone a whole reset, all right? The reason I'm going to do that, the reason I'm going to do... Oh, did I already say comment down below everything? I did. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say that then. I'm going to kind of throw that away. You guys have already heard it, so I'm not going to do it again. But we're going to preview this series real quick here. Thomas Pannone on the mound tomorrow. I'm going to give him a fresh start because he has been dominating AAA over the last... last little while. He's in the area of under two over the last little bit. So he's been fantastic down there for Buffalo. So what are we going to see at the big league level tomorrow? We're going to have to wait and see. All right. He's on the mound against Brad Keller on the mound for the Royals in game one. It's... You guys see what I... That, that's, that, that's not, that's not going to be happening. Mike Montgomery on the mound for the Kansas City Royals. Um... Maybe a Sean Reed Foley? I don't know. That's probably maybe why he only went one inning today. He, 
It says Marcus Stroman on the mound for the Blue Jays in Game 2, but clearly that's not going to happen. So we'll have to wait and see who's pitching for the Jays in Game 2 on Tuesday night. And then Wednesday, the Blue Jays have Jacob Waggis back on the mound against Jacob Junis on the mound for the Royals to round out the three-game series before the Jays head to, head to Baltimore. So if Jays fans love looking at wins... This could be a, this could be a, uh, a six, what is it six games with the Royal or Orioles or a four gamer? It's a four game set against Baltimore. The next seven games are against the Royals and the Orioles. So after playing Boston, the Yankees, and the Rays so much lately, it's nice to see a couple some teams that you might have a chance to beat. All right, so guys, uh, I want to say thank you guys so much for listening and uh, check out my main man Mo Buckets on Twitter, Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. Please go do so. He's he's probably had one heck of a day as we all have. Give him the support. Follow him up on Instagram, Blue Jays Wave on Instagram, guys. Twitter is down below. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff, and I will talk to you guys whenever the Eric Sogard stuff clears up about who heck we're getting back in that trade. I will do a video for you guys on that. And as for the Blue Jays themselves, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night in the opener of the three game set against the <clears throat> against the Kansas City Royals. Eight fifteen first pitch at Kauffman Stadium. Thomas Pinone on the mound for the Blue Jays. Brad Keller on the mound for the Royals in Game One. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys then.